Man, the culture war eats everything, doesn't it? I didn't expect the Barbie movie to be one of the year's most inflammatory tribal identifiers, another victim to our increasingly shrill political climate, but here we are. If you liked Barbie, accusations fly that you only enjoy hearing your woke politics echoed back at you. If you didn't like it, you're an insecure incel. If you laughed, it's because it gave you an opportunity to profess your fealty to vacuous radical chic jargon. If you didn't laugh, it's because you can't handle your fragile male ego being shattered. On the one hand, the movie is an intelligent critique of an icon at the intersection of feminism and consumerism, a poignant social satire. But if you hear someone criticize its ideas, then it's ridiculous to take a movie about Barbies seriously. People will pretend to like it as to not risk being put in the Ben Shapiro camp, or mute their enjoyment of the movie as to not get called a beta. It's a depressing state of affairs that I should have probably seen coming, since nuance doesn't scale as much as aggressive, identity-oriented partisanship. Isn't it silly that in response to opinions about a movie that aspires to critically deconstruct tedious archetypes, we paint our cultural enemies as tedious archetypes. In fact, I think the Barbie cultural phenomenon holds a mirror to some of our most pernicious ideological pathologies. But before I get to that, I'm going to share my thoughts on the film, and this is not going to be one of those takes. There are going to be no moral claims or accusations of bad faith toward people who either liked or disliked the movie. This is going to be an attempt at a measured critique of a movie that I honestly did not like. A movie that, even if you agree with its explicit politics, is, in my opinion, not well done. My first gripe is that Barbie provides too many incentives for the audience to completely disengage. It's one of those movies where there's really only one character, the writer, or in this case, writers. Everyone is a caricature who functions to parrot the writer's opinions, more than behave like believable characters with unique motivations reacting organically to the world around them. It's almost more like a video essay in that regard, which is why I find the people dismissing criticisms of the movie's messages to be completely disingenuous. For example, when Ken approaches a businessman in Los Angeles, he's told that the end of male domination is just a ruse. It's still a man's world, they've just gotten good at hiding it. Nobody who enjoys such privileges would admit to the unfairness of their position. Such individuals can barely even admit this to themselves, never mind a bizarrely dressed stranger. The movie is filled with moments in which the characters break the logic of the world so the writers can say something that, in my opinion, oozes with self-congratulatory cleverness. Ben Shapiro brought up a point that, hey, I gotta admit, I agree with. He mentioned that when the little girl calls Barbie a fascist, Barbie gets confused and says that she doesn't control the railroads or the flow of commerce, so why was she called that? And again, that's something that the basic stereotypical Barbie wouldn't say. Now, I know this is largely a matter of taste, but for me, a movie usually benefits from being akin to Angier's description of a magic trick at the end of the movie The Prestige, as something that benevolently fools the audience. We want to get lost in the story, so when the writers break the illusion to reveal themselves in the form of a joke that at least I don't find to be very clever, it spoils the illusion. Now, that's not to say that I don't enjoy movies that are relentlessly meta or jokey. Deadpool, South Park, or movies like Airplane, all that stuff jives with me. I think the differences in Deadpool, for example, even when he breaks the fourth wall, it's still in the service of building a consistent character who takes the plot seriously. Deadpool's love for Vanessa is never doubted. An episode of South Park makes sense even if you don't engage with the commentary. And in Airplane, although the logic of the world is often broken for the sake of a joke, the central conflict is always taken seriously. The plane really is at risk of crashing. The Barbie movie, in contrast, doesn't take the plot seriously. Characters waffle about whether or not the central outer conflict is real. We're meant to believe that there's a portal opening between the Barbie world and the real world, and that it must be closed. But Weird Barbie then says, actually, there's not really a portal. Only then for the Mattel cronies to close the third act triumphantly because they successfully closed it. And it's never really clear what would happen if the portal didn't close. Now, it doesn't necessarily matter that the plot doesn't make sense. It's more that the audience is incentivized to not take it seriously, which gives us reason to tune out. Also, the movie's final act. Usually the climax of a movie is when the stakes are at their highest, when the main character faces their most grueling challenge and everything about them is put to the test. But the climactic scene in this movie is a flawless plan that goes off without a hitch. The Barbies very easily manipulate the Kens, vote to change the laws, and bam, immediate victory. 
doesn't really jive with Barbie's arc to become less of a flat image of a woman and more of a fully formed three-dimensional one if she overcomes her biggest trial in the effortless style of a stereotypical perfect Barbie doll. There's also a gesture toward a climactic battle with Ken versus Ken, but even this is just a distraction for the Barbies, an event with no stakes, nothing but an empty simulation of a climactic scene. Of course, all of this can be justified by just saying, bro, you don't get it, it's meta. The storytelling is just as superficial as Barbie's. But I find that take to be just a little bit too convenient. I guess for some, the jokes, the visuals, and the songs were enough to maintain engagement, but for me, it wasn't. With that out of the way, let's go to the big one, the movie's preoccupation with patriarchy as its subject of ridicule. I don't have any issues with criticizing patriarchy as such, but I think in the Barbie movie it was done lazily and to poor effect. In the scene where Ken is experiencing Los Angeles for the first time, he sees a few things. Dudes working out at the gym, businessmen shaking hands, a montage of John Travolta in Greece, someone dunking a basketball, and from that, we're supposed to derive that the world is dominated by men? One of the cardinal rules of filmmaking is that you should show and not tell. And Barbie is a film full of almost exclusively telling. I'm willing to bet if you turned off the projector at the moment Ken has his aha moment after walking through Los Angeles and asked the audience, what is it that Ken is attracted to that nobody would say the word patriarchy or anything associated with the concept. It's not until Ken gets the books about patriarchy and we hear him explicitly say how great it is that we understand what he's come to appreciate. If we're meant to believe that patriarchy is so omnipresent that one can detect it just by walking down the street or watching TV, then I think that not only justifies claims to the movie's smugness, but also just comes off as lazy. There are a lot of movies that criticize patriarchy effectively by showing us the issues with it. Let's take a recent one that I quite liked, Promising Young Woman from 2020. First of all, the word patriarchy is never said a single time in the movie. It's about a woman whose friend was sexually assaulted, but because all the men associated with the crime are in positions of power, and the women in the community also benefit from said power, she has nowhere to turn and has to take justice into her own hand. These people aren't going to believe you when you say something's happened. This is how, through dramatization, you can identify and criticize patriarchy. Now, of course, I'm not suggesting that Barbie should undergo anything as serious as the character in Promising Young Woman. For a movie that's supposed to be light and fun, maybe frat boy jokes are tonally appropriate. My point is simply that if all your movie does is tell the audience how pervasive and problematic patriarchy is without showing them, you're not going to do a very good job shining a light on an injustice or justifying it as your subject of critique. It's just going to diminish the term and turn it into an empty buzzword, just pure aesthetics. Another issue people have with Barbie is that it's mean-spirited towards men, but is it? The movie certainly doesn't end on an egalitarian note, but the thing for me is that even though the movie draws a distinction between the Barbie world, which is populated with tedious archetypes, and the real world, the truth is, all the people in the real world are the exact same, just more tedious archetypes. Everyone is essentially a mouthpiece to communicate cultural stereotypes, whether it be the overpaid businessman who succeeds only due to privilege and patriarchy, or catcalling construction workers, or collar-popping foul-mouthed frat dudes who want to be brewski beard, etc. In a movie full of archetypes that peddles in gender politics in which there are good women archetypes versus bad male archetypes, it's pretty unavoidable that it's going to be interpreted as mean-spirited, especially when the message of the movie is that we ought to embrace the three-dimensional messiness and normalcy seen in America Ferreira's Gloria and not subject people to reductionist images like Barbie dolls. Having said that, I don't have a problem with mean-spirited humor. In fact, I want more mean-spirited humor. This movie's particular slant didn't resonate with me, but you know what? That's fine. Not everything has to cater to my proclivities. Now, is the movie really a corporation authentically coming to terms with the legacy of their product's impact? Although it may seem so, with Mattel self-critically painting itself as a boys club that only cares about money, but I don't buy it for a second. It may fancy itself a criticism, but it's entirely a legitimation. There's a part in the movie where Will Ferrell responds to an accusation of being uninclusive by saying, hey, we've got gender-neutral bathrooms up the wazoo, and that he even has a Jewish friend. Sometimes art accidentally tells the truth, and in this case, the movie itself is the gender-neutral bathrooms and Jewish friend, a film that peddles an identitarian politics so it can claim progressivism while not doing anything to address the criticism of perpetuating hyper-consumerism. Or going back to the businessman who says it's still a man's world 
world and they've just got good at hiding it. Again, they almost got it right. It's still a rich person's world and identitarian politics are how they're good at hiding it. Or am I getting it totally wrong? I think one of the most interesting things about the Barbie discourse is the variety of very different takes it's invited. Some say it lampoons identity politics, some say the opposite, and thousands of takes in between. I guess there's something to be said about a movie about dolls that we project our imagination onto functioning as an empty signifier in which so many motivations can find their expression in. Essentially a Rorschach. You see what you want to see. Now, despite all this, I am certain that at least one person will reduce my issues with the film as just window dressing for misogyny. And that's the most depressing thing about Barbie as a cultural phenomenon, that even though on some level we know it's diminishing and inaccurate to reduce people to simplified images, which is essentially what the movie warns against, we do it anyway. Because few things are more effective at affirming our identities than defining ourselves in opposition to the enemy. If our cultural enemies are just flawed, messy humans, then that doesn't say a lot about who we are in contrast. There's much more clarity in postulating enemies as flat two-dimensional dolls that allow us to act out the fantasies that help us make sense of the world and our place in it. I'm reminded of one of philosopher Slavoj Žižek's most famous descriptions of ideology. Citing his mentor Jacques Lacan, Žižek recounts a story about a jealous husband who suspects that his wife is cheating on him. Explained crudely, even if the wife really is fooling around, his paranoia is still pathological because he needs that suspicion to maintain his identity as a concerned husband who is deserving of a certain kind of love. We can alter this to bear relevance to the culture war. Rather than a jealous husband, we can imagine someone who suspects that their friend didn't enjoy the Barbie movie because he's a flagrant misogynist. Even if that's true, the necessity to automatically paint their friend as a misogynist is pathological, because the accuser needs to assume the worst in their cultural enemy in order to make sense of their place in the world as a do-gooder, as a fighter of evil, as a righteous crusader on the correct side of history. So, while we may think that Barbie joined us in the real world at the end of the movie, the truth is, our social imaginary is increasingly lived in Barbie world, and we are all Barbie girls. We're constructing our identities in opposition to people people as real as the dolls in Barbie land. When we paint people as culture war reductionisms, we're playing with dolls. And if there's a point to this video, it's that playing with dolls is for kids. To be clear, this isn't a call to all agree and sing kumbaya around the campfire. We live in a democracy, which means we have to be able to endure having our sentiments outraged. As Christopher Hitchens once said, politics is division by definition. We're going to disagree. There's no doubt about it. But maybe it's not too much to ask to be more critical of the knee-jerk impulse to reduce people we disagree with to tedious archetypes. Let's aspire to not form our ideologies by playing with Barbies. If your opinion on the film didn't conform nicely with the mandates of tribal lines, I'd love to know in the comments. You got any other good takes? Would love to hear them. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more content. Check out my coffee page if you would like to financially support the channel. Hit me up on Twitch. Join the Discord. All those links are below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your summer. Peace.